Hi, I'm Dr. Alan Lim, and today we are in the Applied Exercise Science Laboratory, where I actually did my doctoral work under the direction of Dr. William Burns. We're here today with Anna Christian, who is the reigning Collegiate Club Criterium National Champion. We've got Peter and Dylan, and we're gonna be doing some laboratory testing today to better understand her performance. Nice work, keep those legs moving. You come into an environment like this for three reasons. One, to understand how you stack up against others. Two, to compare yourself with yourself over time to understand how your training or how your fitness might be changing over time. And three, to get some variables that can help determine some basic training intensity zones. In this environment, we're gonna be able to measure three key things. We're gonna be able to measure her lactate threshold, we're able to measure her oxygen consumption to get her VO2 max. And we're also gonna be able to measure her oxygen consumption for a given power output, which gives us her economy or gross mechanical efficiency, essentially a measure of miles per gallon. Now, what's interesting about these three parameters, VO2 max, lactate threshold, and economy, is that they all relate to performance, but they don't necessarily relate to each other. So if I've got someone with a high maximal oxygen consumption or a high peak power output, it doesn't necessarily mean that they also have a high lactate threshold or that they're very efficient. Now, what's also unique about this environment is that by knowing or understanding some of these physiological variables, we can better understand what this athlete might be best suited for and give them some direction with respect to their training. A lot of this information you can do on your own, either on a trainer, out in the field during a time trial test, or if you have a power meter, you can also measure this on the road. So the first thing we need to do a, a test like this is we need to have an ergometer. We're using the H3 from Saris. We're using it to control both resistance as well as to measure power output. In today's protocol, we're gonna be starting her out at a fairly easy intensity, something that she considers to be light. And then every four minutes, we're gonna be increasing by about 25 watts. And we'll do that with this trainer. The next thing we have is we have a metabolic cart. The metabolic cart allows us to measure how much oxygen she's consuming, as well as how much CO2 she's expiring. This gives us a measure of how much energy she is burning right because oxygen consumption is directly related to that energy cost and by measuring how much co2 she blows off that ratio of oxygen to co2 gives us an understanding of what kind of fuel she's burning lastly we'll be measuring blood lactate effectively we're going to be taking a small sample of blood every stage so at every increment of power towards the end of that stage to assess her blood lactate level your max VO2 or your maximal aerobic capacity is indicative of your health status, indicative of how strong your cardiovascular system is. Your VO2 max is only one parameter that indicates your fitness level or your potential for an aerobic sport like cycling. Your peak power output is also one of those variables. And the two effectively go hand in hand. The peak amount of power that you can hold for say a five to 10 minute period of time is probably directly proportional to that VO2 max. So in addition to all of these physiological variables, we also ask her how she is feeling using a rating of perceived exertion chart. Essentially, it's a little scale that goes from six to 20, no exertion at all, to maximal exertion, and descriptors everywhere in between, because it's also important for us to understand how she's feeling throughout this test. And perceived exertion, feel, is a key variable in terms of controlling training intensity. If we can give them some perspective on how these variables relate to their own sense of feel, it makes training a little easier, especially in very dynamic situations. This idea of lactate threshold is extraordinarily confusing because so many people have so many different ways of defining it. Today, we're actually looking at the concentration of blood lactate, and we're looking for a point where it's steady and then suddenly starts to increase. Specifically, we're gonna be looking at where the blood lactate is about one millimole above baseline. 
This gives us an intensity that we know most athletes can hold going all out for about two hours. So effectively, this is akin to marathon pace. In cycling, there are all of these other terms that are being used for threshold. For example, functional threshold power is a common term. Functional threshold power is a little different than how we might be defining lactate threshold because it really is a power output that you can hold for one hour. One important thing about threshold is that this is something that you assess if you're challenging yourself to go as hard as possible for a given time frame. So if you see a functional threshold power that is being generated by an algorithm, say on Zwift or Training Peaks, because they know your power output, what they don't know is if you're truly testing yourself. So while you can measure your threshold power on your own, on a trainer or out in the field with a power meter, you have to be in the mindset of challenging yourself and going as hard as you can for that given time frame. While there still might not be a perfect correlation, it all goes south if you're not actually working as hard as possible. So whether you're measuring threshold by actually looking at blood lactate, by using perceived exertion, or looking at peak sustainable pace, one of the keys is the ability to control your power output. One of the easiest ways is with a smart trainer. You can set your power output at a very low intensity and slowly increase the intensity over time using stages of appreciable length, say three to four minutes. And basically, you can test where that point of somewhat hard to hard to very hard happens. You can assess essentially your ventilatory response and see where that point of respiration begins to break. You could even look at your heart rate response and there's been an old test called the Conconi test which works for some, doesn't work for others, where you might actually even see an inflection in your heart rate. Ultimately, I tend to think that going by feel works pretty well and if you've got a way to increment your power output, you can assess where that transition occurs and over time, as you retest yourself, you can see if that same exact point moves or changes. And that's ultimately an indication that you've gotten fitter. We ultimately test for three reasons. We test to get a baseline of yourself compared to other people. We test to see that baseline relative to ourselves over time. And we also test to get physiological variables like lactate threshold that can help us to determine some training intensity zones for a given period of time. We accomplished all of that today with Anna. We know that she is as fit as any female athlete who's ever come into this laboratory. That's a great perspective. We'll be able to test her again at some point in time and see how much she improves as she continues to mature as an athlete um, and as she gets more miles under her legs. And we've got a lactate threshold value that we can use to establish some training intensity zones for her as she is entering kind of the off season. Ultimately, you can feel a lot of these parameters, and if you've got a controlled environment where you can actually measure this stuff, especially power output, all of these three things can be accomplished. You can compare yourself against other people, compare yourself against yourself, and you can reestablish training intensity zones. I think the big part of all of this testing is ultimately about being kind of vulnerable to where you are at a given point in time so that you can make increments to get where you wanna go. And one of the difficulties ultimately is that translation between where you want to be with where you actually are. It just takes time, it takes a lot of patience, and it takes a lot of work. Yeah.